Hello and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone and welcome to part 8 of Learning Piece by Piece, the complete beginner's guide to Motion 5. If you are new here, I suggest going back to tutorials 1 or 2 and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload future videos. So today we're going to be looking at masks and I've put together this little background which is just really four color solids and I've just moved them over on X. And so let's um, go into this group and let's just add a mask. Now we'll go to our mask tool down the bottom here and you can see in here there are several different kinds of masks and there's the Bezier mask, which is exactly the same as we did in the drawing tools and the pen tools some, some time ago. And the Beast Blind does exactly the same thing, but we're just gonna use a circle mask. So we're gonna hold down shift and drag out a circle mask. And what happens immediately is that you see changes have taken place. And if we center it up now, and then we move, you can see that everything outside is invisible and you can only see what's inside the mask. So if we move the mask across now, you'll see all the different colors appearing, which means that it's masking out um, the whole group, basically, not just the top layer. So what would happen if we inverted the mask? Well, now everything outside the mask is visible and you can't see anything inside. So if I add something behind that mask, then you should be able to see through all the layers in the group down to see what's behind that group. Okay, so let's create another group. Let's have a look at this. And into that group, I'm going to drag a picture of a tiger. And we'll just pop that in there. And you can see it's right on the surface, and that's because the group is above the group with the mask. So what I need to do is I need to move this group down to the bottom of the stack. So we'll just do shift square, um, command square bracket and we'll move it down. And now what you can do is you can see that the image is actually behind the all the layers in the previous group. So it's masked out the complete group and not just the top layer of the, of the top group. So um, bear in mind that it will mask out the group and not just an object. Okay, so um, what, are the, what can we do with it? Well, let's have a look at what we can do with some basic, very basic masks. So I've created this little gradient and we know how to do those. I've used burnt umber and I wanted to create just that yellow line across the screen. So I just played with the little sliders until I got it kind of how I wanted it. Um, and that would suit what we're going to do. So we'll close that group off. And now what we'll do is we'll create another group and we're gonna import our tiger picture. And there he is, I love that picture. I found that royalty free online. So we're just gonna scale it and position it, somewhere like that. And we'll just move it over a tad, not too much, probably about there, and just move it down a little bit. Okay, something like that. So it's starting to look pretty cool. So I'm gonna animate in that tiger now, and I'm gonna use masks to animate it in. There's two ways that you can animate, either moving the object or moving the mask. And in this case, we're gonna move some masks. So we're gonna add, let's just resize so that I can see it. And we're going to add now a Bezier mask. And I'm just gonna create a triangle shape over one side of the tiger. 
something about like that. Now you can see everything inside the mask, you can see outside, you can't. And what I'm going to do now is duplicate that mask. So having duplicated it, I will now rotate it 180 degrees. And there you go, I've got the full tiger's face, but it's revealed by two image, by two masks. So I'm now just going to, yeah, just move the control points around on the second one so that it actually um, gets the whole of the head in. Okay, so now let's animate the first one. Go forward 30 frames and we will and we will keyframe at the final position. Move back to the beginning and now we'll start moving the masks around. So the first one we'll move left and up. And the second one, we're just gonna move right and down. I'm trying to keep the alignment of those arrows pretty similar. So now what we've got is the masks coming in the past masks animating and revealing the object below. However, most people, when they're using masks, don't use this a lot and move the masks. They generally use move the object because normally it's text that they're working with. So let's just add some text in here. Let's add motion five. Okay, so that's done. And now we will just scale it up to what we want and position it. move it down a tad. Now I'm going to use that yellow line um, to reveal my text. Okay, so we did exactly the same thing. I'm going to add a rectangle mask to the group. And we will just pop that over the top of Motion 5. Now remember, you can see Motion 5 currently because it's inside the mask. So let's move forward 30 frames and keyframe motion five at that position. And then we will go back to the beginning and move the text down. Now, when it goes outside the mask, you can't see it anymore. So we've created that movement coming from behind the yellow light. But I just want to magnify it a little bit because, of, yeah, I'm a little concerned that the mask is a little bit low. So I'm going to raise the mask up a little bit. I don't think that should do it. That's better. And now we can see it coming from behind the yellow line. Now let's go to our keyframe inspector because what I want to happen is I want it to come in slower at the end. So I'm going to break the tangent for the last key keyframe. I'm just going to pull that out so that it's a little bit slower coming in at the end. And there you go. That's something like I wanted. Play around till you've got that right and to your own satisfaction. And then we'll just add another group. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We'll add a text. And we'll call this masking, for want of a better word. And then we will scale it up. I don't want it the same size, but not too far off. And then we will position that and line it up as we did with the last one. Okay, everything's looking good. And then Move back to where the animation begins, which is 31 frames, and then I will move that group back to 31 frames. Okay, so we're looking good. So now, I'm to this group, I'm going to add another rectangle mask. I'm going to place that over masking. And remember, of course, that we can see everything that's inside that mask, we can't see anything that's outside it. And so once again, we'll keyframe it at its final position. And then we will move it up so that it disappears above the line. And now you've got both texts appearing from behind the line. Which, of course, the line doesn't exist. It's an illusion um, we created with the gradient. 
I'm going to go to my uh, keyframe inspector and I'm going to slow it down at the end similarly to what I did with the first piece of text. And now we've got this really nice effect going on. And that masking is as simple as that and it will give you these really um, cool effects. It really is about understanding that it's the group that it masks, not the object. And so once you understand that concept, then masking becomes a lot easier. What we're going to do is we will um, come back and we we'll look at another way of masking and some of the common problems that people find. Um, and that will be in the next video, part two of this one. But play about with simple, basic masks and see what you can create. It really is great fun. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and share. And um, all that remains to be said now is see you in the next video.